So just to, um, I don't want to go on too much longer because there's a lot of stuff in here, but I'll go through the forestry stuff fairly briefly. And these are DNR maps. And uh, basically what the purple shows you is old, ma um, mature to, mature multi-aged old growth forest. And there's a lot of it around Sandy Lake. And that's unusual in Nova Scotia today. You know, we hear all the stuff about clear cutting and so on. I mean, that, that is a, is, is a, um, is a huge asset to have all of this forest around Sandy Lake. Now, there, there are some differences in composition, when, especially when you go into the Jack Lake land. It's much more softwood in here. I think there's probably more cutting in the past. It's also a more acidic system. And you get some lovely, lovely hard mixed, uh, uh, mixed forests and, and hardwoods up in here. So this is, again, part of that uh, huge asset that I see for Sandy Lake. So as I said, uh, when I was, all, all my treks, I, did, and I, I think I showed this slide way back, I said basically I did treks all through the whole area. And every time I'd see a tree that was 16 inches or larger, and I got pretty good at recognizing them because I'd measure them too, uh, I'd make a note about it, and then I'm able to make maps like this. And what I was trying to do was to put together where there are clusters of big trees. And this is an example. This is down around, this is the parking lot. And the bigger the circle here, the bigger <coughs> the tree, you know, different species for different colors. So you can see clusters of these big trees in here. And then I got uh, Colin Gray to come in with me and do these old gross assessments. And um, we looked at three sites. We looked at a site dominated by white pine here behind the parking lot, a site dominated by eastern hemlock here, and the mixed forest was dominated by hardwoods up here. So these were just examples. There's more of them around here, but these are patches I identified that looked to me like old growth. And so, and uh, another one that uh, actually Ed Glover had already that beautiful forest on the uh, beautiful forest on the peninsula. Ed Glover had got DNR in there a few years back to do an assessment on that place. And then I'd also done ages in the clear cut, and we also aged one tree over at Derek's place. So these are the um, these are the average ages of the bigger trees. It's a complicated number, but just take it like it is. These are the maximum age that we observed at these different sites. I want you to look at these numbers. 136 years, 134 years, mm -hmm. 141 years, 126, 100 plus. Over here, just looking at, at the stumps. So these are our old forests. And um, again, the same numbers. So to me, what's exciting about it is you have kind of, you know, you have the mixed Acadian forest and it comes in different flavors. And basically, you've got all flavors in this forest. So we've got areas dominated by white pine, by hemlock, uh, hardwoods, and so on. And this is, the, this is the peninsula forest. And it has all these, these features of old growth forests with lots of dead wood in it, widely spaced trees, and so on, et cetera, et cetera. And then also the, the forest floor is not level but has pits and mounds. And before you leave, that 211, that's 211 year old tree. Yeah. Or trees. Yeah. Not necessarily the oldest tree there, that's <coughs> the oldest one that they measured. So these pits and mounds, they, they look like this. And uh, this to me is really fascinating. It's something I only learned about relatively recently. And um, people are really only become more aware of. What these mounds are, are they, they represent an old growth trees that blew down. And the stump fell over and the soil came over them and the mound. And what, what they mean is when you have a bunch of them like this, it means this is a very, very old forest. It's not only as old as these trees, but it's as old as these trees. So these are like almost like burial grounds inside the forest. And um, this is a woman, a, a Russian woman, who Donna, Donna Crossland at Kedgy got down here in the early 2000s to look at stuff. And she's been coming more and more down to Nova Scotia. And she's a world authority on these pits and mounds. And basically, she can go in here and tell you, and tell you what species it was that was in that previous forest. And these are forests. This, is, this mound is formed by blowdown. 
When the tree blows down, I'll, I'll show you a diagram of this. She also looks at the presence of charcoal because sometimes they burned afterwards. And um, anyway, it's revealing a lot about the dynamics of our forest. And these forests are full of pits and mounds. So it's one thing that really got me excited. So this is kind of the story of wind. It blows it over, you have an uprooted tree, it starts to decompose. You get a mound. The other thing about it is it's actually a preferential place for new trees to grow. So almost all of the trees you see are on mounds. They're not in the pit. They grow on the mounds here. And uh, this is an example. This is a tree that, that's grown over, and there's actually already trees growing up on, on top of it. Now, the, the trees blow down. They blow down in a certain direction. And you can tell from the orientation of the mound what direction that tree fell down on. Okay. You look across it. So what I did was I looked at the direction of tree fall for uh, which one is okay, yeah, for, for the mounds. And then also there's a lot of hurricane one fall out there. I looked at the direction of tree fall for hurricane one. And they all fall in this kind of section of the of the compass. Both the old ones and the new ones. And what that means is is that the winds that blew them down came from down here. They came from the southeast. And those are hurricane winds that came down there that blew these blew these forests down. And I, I was actually uncomfortable with this because I thought, they sh I thought, you know, the hurricanes come up the east coast, they should come up this way. And anyway, I talked to Don and other people. It turned out Bob Guscott had done almost identical measurements that I made at Grand Lake and got virtually identical results. So a huge wind event blew a lot of these forests down X years ago. How many years ago? Well, roughly, the age of the oldest trees on, is the, the age of the, of the mound. Here, here's a mound. And the age of that tree in there is the age of the oldest trees that you find on the mounds in an area. And add 10 to 20 years because you measure the age at that height takes time to get going and so on. And our age, you remember I gave you those age numbers, 140 years. 140 is 160. So this makes in the region of 1857 to 1867. And it could have been, for example, the famous Saxby Gale. But there was a big wind event and actually what since then Bob and I and, and other people who've been looking more and more at this was this woman, this Russian woman um, anyway, there's, there's a story developing about wind and forests in Nova Scotia and, and how we've had these huge blowdowns in the past. Okay? And one was another one, mm -hmm. a similar one. Then the peninsula one are, are older, so that would have been a windstorm that occurred in this area here. So there's just, you know, there's an interesting story that's developing there. And what's interesting about it to me is, is that you don't see this in a managed forest. You don't see it in a managed forest because they pulverize the ground and because also because they take the big trees out and the mounds don't form. And so that's one of the real values of these intact natural systems is that you can see all these processes going on. And uh, it just you know gives it a lot of, I think, value and interest. And another thing, I'm not going to go into detail about this, but I do have it described on the website. Another thing I discovered was this. It's what I call, it's an intimate association between yellow birch and hemlock, which I call the Acadian forest love affair. And I, I think it gets kind of passionate at times. <laughs> and actually what you're seeing here is that this is on a mound. This mound is eroded. When this er eventually erodes, you're going to see that. And so there's a very intimate association of yellow birch and hemlock. And there is an explanation about it, but it's a little lengthy. And I, I won't go into it now. It's just a really fascinating story that was told by these woods we have at Sandy Lake. Nobody had ever told that story before. So it's not, another kind of really interesting thing to me, which you would not see in a, in a managed forest. So I'm just trying to highlight. And oh, part of the story here is, is that yellow birch likes to grow on 
hemlock tip alders. That's actually been documented. That is their preferred habitat in their natural forest. So here's a Hurricane Juan tip over. Hurricane Juan was what, 2003? Mm -hmm. There was a yellow birch on the estimated to be 12 years old. It got there very quickly. So it's just, and, and again, what I'm saying is you don't, these are things you see only in, in natural forests. So I, I think you can see I get a little excited about it. Mm -hmm. But I, I think, you know, a wonderful attribute. 